So we'll discuss about the materials then. As we were in the introduction, we ended up in knowing the triangle that is relating the reasons of premature failure. One of the components was material strength. So in this lecture, we'll talk about how material strength is evaluated, how it is measured, and what parameters and what are the standard values of material that we take while selecting on the data for the pavement side. So we, we start with the bottom. The bottommost layer of a pavement is the subgrade. And obviously, this is the layer, uh, this is one of the key input to the design of pavement. The subgrade is strength for designing a flexible pavement is measured in terms of a conventional method that is California bearing ratio and then the resident model. While when we construct a rigid pavement, when we want to design a rigid pavement, there is another subgrade parameter, subgrade property that is we call modulus of subgrade ratio. Uh, and this is the value we are need. We need to design as the input in our rigid pavement design. So first two are related to flexible pavement design and the other, the third one is the modulus of subgrade direction K. Now, what is CBR? It's a ratio. We call this a California bearing ratio test. And if there are you know, more than 200 countries in the world, it is still adopted the, the the most common way, the most popular way, and the most easiest way to measure the strength of a soil, subgrade soil, and even for the material as well, base and subbase, uh, and that are used for as input method, and especially uh, in H2 method of design in this parameter. Uh, actually, uh, when we call when we talk about CBR is the material is subjected to a uniaxial load, one dimensional load from the top, or if you say uh, if, if we have the XY and Z axis, it is you know applied along the Z axis to the material, and we need to know how much that load is uh, will uh, that load will carry a penetration. And if the penetration is more, then the soil is weak. If the penetration is less, the soil is strong. And when we say ratio, what we do, we apply, we test our soil for a given load, and we test the standard rock material that is uh, that happens to be our standard for comparison. So when then we do the comparison. The strength of given soil with the same loading as of the crushed material and we do the comparison. The strength of the soil, the value of strength of the soil comes in the numerator and the strength that drop comes into the this, this ratio and obviously that should be less than 100 percent or if, if it is, you know, it's seldom happening it is 100 percent. But it cannot be more than 100 percent. Right. And then why this method is so popular because it can be done in field as well as laboratory time. The instruments are not very sophisticated, nor it is such that uh, you need uh, you need lot of effort to trans transfer that instrument to carry that transfer instrument. You can just carry it on the you know uh, you can do it in the motorcycle as well. One of the pillion rider can get hold of this machine. That's it. You don't even don't need a truck or car to carry this machine. It is very simple. Obviously, there are other instruments as well. So you can use Chinchi as well, you know, and you see. This, this will be a more uh, logical conclusion because you need to carry the mold and that or all that stuff. So not more than this vehicle. So it's cheaper to carry, it's cheaper to transport, and it's very easier to apply, a uh, test. Uh, and this, obviously, I told you the CBR, it's not limited, uh, not limited to subgrade layer. It is also, it is also a parameter to identify the subbase 
material and as well as the base layer. So any unbounded aggregate layer that you see uh, in the flexible payment, namely what I mean is that in a flexible payment, there is an asphalt concrete payment. And below that, there is a base and sub-base, and then the sub-base. So all those layers that is not asphalt layer, they have been identified, they have been specified in terms of CV. What should be the value of CBR subgrade sub layer? What is the value of CBR of subgrade material that is used? What should be the value of base material? That's how if you have a specification, then according to your specification, you come up with the design. So let's see uh, how it happens. Uh, what we do is, uh, I don't know whether, whether this animation is running or not. Oh, sorry. So this is a cylinder. Uh, this is a specimen. This is a cylindrical specimen made up of the material. It can be a subgrade soil or it can be. Anyhow, the crush base or a subgrade uh, or the subbase, they are minus four times material. Means this material, whatever we use for CVR testing, the material should pass number four. So it's a final material. You know all that, that you know, we have number 4c dividing crush and so anything above uh, uh, 4c number 4c is not used while designing a cylindrical specimen for cbr and the material may be from uh, maybe for subgrade sub base layer or sub base layer but the even those stones are you know what i'm trying to uh, you know, explain you clarify this say sometimes you have say 1.5 inch material uh, in in a subgrade in a, in, a, in a base, so it's even though we have so we are not going to test one point five inch material because there is always a gradation for the base. So even for base material, any material within that gradation that is four or less will be okay, for this case. In some base we have two and a half inch material. We are not going to test two and a half material for the test. We are going to test out of that relation, obviously, to half doesn't mean that it has, the vessel, it has not got any lesser material. Yes, we do have number four material. So whatever is part, the sample will be made for that. Right? Not more than number four material size. Not the coarse material. We don't do the CVR. Though it looks that for the CVR, we are doing coarse material, but it's not coarse material. Now, uh, in, you know, in the illustration, you can see this soil sample, and this soil sample is subjected to a unidirectional load, as you can see. As I was telling you, that we have this Z uh, load along the Z axis, and what what we do, we we have this cylinder, the loading piston. And we try to penetrate, we apply a load in a such a manner that this cylinder having three inch square area and we apply slowly 0 0.05 inch per minute load to this space. And we record how much this cylinder has penetrated every 0.1 inch. So actually, we have to you will take the reading at 0 0.05, we'll take at the reading at 0 0.10, 0 0.15, 0 0.20, 0 0.25, 0 0.3, and then some people say, okay, take get, let go to the 0.5. So you can take 0 0.05 inches interval and you take record the reading till you get 0 0.1 inch. And then obviously you continue until you have the sample stops taking the load. So how you measure that load? So we will see that the total penetration should not exceed 0.5 inch. So if the sample, most of the time sample fail before 0.5 inch. But if the sample has not failed somehow, you have to stop that. Okay. Right? And then you draw the load penetration. Uh, 
let me show you the machine now. This is a slimper. This is six inch standard slimper, a sample with, with the seven inch height. We prepare that sample. And then for sample, there is an extra surcharge load that is also, it, it, it looks from this figure that uh, there is no load. Actually, oh, when you prepared, actually you prepared a five inch sample. And for we, we place two layers uh, of extra uh, steel plate so that it is a simulation of the pavement thickness, the dead load. You will see that in a pavement design, you will only consider live load. So where will be the dead load? Actually, what happens, why we don't consider the dead load? So, you know, live load is from the traffic. The dead load, we don't consider it when, you know, as compared to other structure design, for example, a structure design, we consider dead load as well as live load while designing. Here, we actually, when we are measuring the strength, we have actually accommodated the dead load at ourselves. So that's why we design pavement for, for live load. Now what happens is you can see now the, uh, the illustration. There's a cylinder obviously the soil is of this thing that there are surcharge weights. Why we have the surcharge weight? To simulate the weight of the pavement. And the other thing is, if you don't put the load, and if this load is applied and you, you don't put the extra load, the material will go up. As you know, we can see that cutting diagram previously. So there is a shear failure. So actually this load keep this material coming out from the site. So there are two reasons. One is the simulation of the live load and the other is to prevent heaving of the position. Other, because if there is a heaving occurs, you cannot measure the load, uh, uh, the CBR resistance correctly. So this is a typical testing machine and then there is a loadometer. Uh, actually, this is where uh, this is a transducer will be give you the penetration. This, this is a deformation gauge. There you can see, you can note that 0 0.05 inch. And then there is a dial gauge somewhere here. Somewhere here. That measures the applied. How much load has been applied. Right? And obviously, this will... And there are two types of tests. One is unsoaked CBR test. And then is, there, is, there is a soaked CBR test. Normally, you can feel that, you know, uh, when there is a rain, we all feel that the soil becomes wet. And the well soil becomes wet, it's, you know, it's the, the, the surface is not rideable because the soil loses its strength. And that's why it fails. So, the problem is, again, we go for the conservative design. If you measure dry, that will not simulate the fluid condition because the thing is we want our pavement to surprise during the rain as well. So that's why we take soca. What you do, we prepare sample, we soak it for four days, and then so this is called. Even though we have methodology for unsoak test and soak test. But, you know, if someone asks me to do the quality control test, I always do the soak test. Because the result of unsoaked test is irrelevant for my design. When I say I have designed a pavement on 6 CBR, I mean I have designed it for the CBR value that is obtained after performing of the soak test, not the unsoaked. One easier method is prepare the sample test it rightly, but it, it, it is useful, right? Now what you do, uh, actually you calculate in terms of percent, so load or stress on the soil, load or stress of the standard rock. Standard rock is already measured, so you don't need to know this thing. This standard rock is very, it's similar all over the world. The rock has the same strength, more or less, for this type of machine. Because the machine is same, 
it is universal machine. So yes, it should be calibrated to some uh, two uh, thing that as well. But it gets normal, so you don't need to measure the strength of the rock each time. So you have people have come up with these standard values in uh, pounds, in kilonewton, in psi, and this what you do. For example, you test. I I note I you know noted the value of stress on the soil at point where in each penetration. That will some value divided by three thousand. And if I'm if, if I'm if I want to know the point in two inch penetration, we'll have this value from our dial gauge from the load penetration graph, and then we divide it by four thousand five hundred. So we don't need to determine the the denominator value. It's already given to us. It has already been tested. There is no um, there is no fun of inventing the wheel again. So you have to be with it. What we do is sometimes we we test the CBR value at point value. Not all, not sometimes, it's always it's like this. These are standards method in which we have to test CBR at 0.1 inch penetration and 0.2 inch penetration. And then use the maximum value as the design CBR. Sometimes you will find that value at 0.1 inch penetration is less than 0.2 inch penetration. You know what the, what the methodology says for these type of tests, any type of test, actually you have to have five samples. Best of five samples. And if all the five samples responds to the same thing, usually the 0.1 inch penetration is more than the 0.2 inch penetration. And that's to be reported, but sometimes 0.2 inch penetration is more than 0.1. So whatever is the highest value, use it. The question is why uh, we have this 0.1 inch penetration more than a 0.2 inch penetration. It's because, you know, while penetrating, the first thing is we need more load because that's the surface. And sometimes for that surface, you need more load to penetrate. It's just like drilling a hole. If you if you want to drill a hole, the, the more effort, the first more effort is the seating effort. You have to place correctly and you have to push the hole, push the wall, push your instrument against the wall to get it. So you need more load. So that's the same with this for, for point one inch of the first few inches of penetration, it will require more. Because it contains seating. But naturally, the point one is there. But it can be otherwise as well. Sometimes, actually, what we do, we when we prepare a sample, we have a spacer disk. We place the moon, we have a spacer disk around two inches, and then we start preparing the sample in five equal layers. What happens that once we prepare the sample, we invert the moon. So the last layer that was that have compacted becomes the first layer. And the first layer becomes the last layer. And because when we do me when we remove that spacer disk while testing, actually this gap will enable us to place our first charge. That's why we have this spacer disk. Otherwise, there is no use of this. That's why I say technically it's a five inch sample. The cylinder is around five inch to seven inch height, and we made five inch sample. And then what happens sometimes because the first layer it may not have compacted, and you know, all the water that has been, you know, put while you know come, will have gone through that the last layer. So that material becomes stuck. So sometimes when you apply the sitting load, it is more easier to get penetrated. Another thing is this problem. You see what happens is that you, from here, can you see where is the soil from this diagram? No. Your imagination is 
that the piston is seated right at the start of the piston should be in contact of the sorry. But you cannot see it. You have imagine it. So when we, you know, doing that 0.5 in 0 0.05, maybe there was no the the piston may not have get contacted with the soil. So that 0.05 inch you will not get any. There is no load response. Why there is no load response? Because there is no soil. There is no resistance. The soil is, is still below. My, so the thing is, I imagine that this piston is in contact with the soil. And that's why a soil or any other material, sorry. Then if it is not in contact, the first few uh, deformation, the first few movement of circle will will give you no load. And then this will create uh, illustration and I will show you. And that's why sometimes at point 0.1 inch, because the soil was not in contact, so when I measured point 0.1 inch, actually I have measured point 0.05 as which for point 0.05 I have not got any value. So actually the point 0.1 inch has been shifted. So that's why you may not have a correct value at point one inch penetration as compared to the point two inch penetration. And how? And you know, you from the tabular form, even though you are noting, you need a graph to verify the result. You are not going to take the graph. For instance, we have point one inch value in the table, and I have some values. I will not take that thing. I will draw a graph. And then I will take the value from the graph. And this is why what why what was the reason? Because the soil may be soft. And the soil, the piston may have not become. So that point one inch I will point one inch, no more point one inch in the actual thing. So that's why we draw a graph, as you can see. And there this is a very interesting graph. There are three types of graphs. You know, the resistance. First thing we'll discuss the pink. If if you want, if you find this graph, your test has no way. You have to throw your sample and reject. Why? 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 Why I'm saying? Why I'm rejecting? All what this is. Logically, once you start loading the soil, it will get higher penetration value until it fails. But when it fails, it will go down. It is not going to up, up, up again. It will always go down. If, it's a, if it has reached its maximum, it is not going to go up. So this graph, what happened with this graph? Yes, for two points, like 500, it has gone. Then suddenly it gone to 400. Then it comes to no. There is something terribly wrong, either with your instrumentation, or either you have not noted it properly. So this type, I'm sorry, you have to redo this. You have to start from again. Make the sample, soak it for four hours, for four days, like this. There is no correction to it. Your exercise is in few times. So let's, uh, I'll talk about blue curve next time. Uh, oh, sorry, later. Then there's a red. And this is what happening. You see, if you forget this point, you will see a constant or you can see a constant slope, ascending slope. And then obviously it has, you know, gone somewhere and then it has reached its maximum value. No, it is not failing. It may happen that after this point will fall down that again, but if it has fallen one time, It is not going to rise. Okay, what happens is that you see if you look at this diagram, the slope, the slope is less steeper than at this point. And this is what happens is that initially the material has not responded. That is what I, what I was saying. Either the material has too much moisture, or because of the piston not touching the soil sample. Anyhow, once it has touched the soil sample, it has started its resistance. And you can see that 
it becomes as parallel as the blue line. So what happens is that your slope, the point one is not this value. We have to draw some tangent. I will show you how. And from that tangent, this boy, whatever it strikes this x-axis, this is my zero. So I will take measure point one from this zero to other one. That's why I, what I was saying is do not take the values of point one and point two inch from the table. Draw the graph and see if it is need, needing co correction. If it is not needing correction, then the graph, this is a fair curve. And again, this is an idea. It do happen, but you know, it happens with the experience when the, you know, the person who is doing this test has this ability to touch the soil sample without swaying it. So this, this, this is some an experience or accidentally it happens. So again, this is a fair graph. If, if this is a graph, then it's okay. This 0.1H value is you, either you take, if you have a blue graph, then either you take from the table or from the graph, it's okay. But if this is a red graph, pink graph, obviously this is discarded result. So without drawing a graph, you will not know anything, right? And then you will have to do the correction. What happens is that this is you know type of S curve, and what we have we have drawn a tangent where you see the slope has changed. You did not draw a tangent here. The slope between these two points is not same because between first two points and the slope between two to three points they are same. So you you do not require correction. But what happens is that between third point and fourth point, you have now, your slope is shifted and that's why you have to draw a tangent. And wherever this draw tangent, you know, see you will, now this is your C. And then from Z0, you are, you know, doing in the graph, from point one inch value, you intersect the graph and you get this load value. And so you understand how these curves you read, and then once you do that, obviously there is another thing is about the moisture content. You can see that graph. The PR more the moisture content, the less will be the CBR. You can, you can see, and this is a not a linear thing. It falls, you know, if for instance, if this is say. 4%. This is 5%. And then between 5 to 6%, that you know, if I say 4%, maybe CBR say 10. At you know, 5%, maybe CBR is 8. But all of a sudden, at 6%, CBR is not 10, 8. It has drawn, gone to nearly 2.5. So that's the problem. The moisture will, you know, will have a larger impact on that's why we use the slope CBR test. So that's it for today. We stop here. Uh, stop. Stop share. And